All right, so we've talked about graphing. We've talked about characteristics. So it's only fitting that the next thing we talk about is application. We talk about some word problems. The first thing we need to discuss with applications is the difference between a growth and decay factor or a growth and decay rate. So in this first problem here, we are trying to find or determine if we have a growth or a decay function. We should recognize that we have a growth function because my parent function, my base is greater than 1. 1.35 is greater than 1. So what we have to determine now is what is a growth factor. Remember, factors are things that get multiplied together. So my factor is what I see in my problem. 1.35 is what's being multiplied. 1.35 is what's being multiplied. When we talk about a rate, we're asking ourselves how much over 1 is my factor? How much over 1 is my factor? So hopefully you recognize that this is 0.35 or 35%. Because I know that I could take this 1.35 and separate it as 1 plus 0 0.35. So my rate is the number that pushes me over 1. So let's look at this next example. I'm going to go down the page. I'm just going to keep talking about growth for now. I do have a growth because my base is greater than 1. Okay, this is my parent, and B is greater than 1. Okay, so I have a growth. My factor is immediately what I see in my problem. I'm multiplying something by 1.04. which means my rate is going to be that little bit that pushes me over 1, okay, 0.04 or 4%. Try number 5 quickly on your own. I encourage you to pause the video and try it out. But we do have a growth. This is my parent function again. And if I were to add 1 plus 0.23, I would get 1.23, which is greater than 1. Okay, so that means I do have a growth. My growth factor is 1.23. And the number that pushes me over 1 is 0.23 or 23 Let's continue our growth conversation with our growth word problems. So flip your packet over, and we should see this function here that talks about growth. So when we have a growth function, okay, I'm going to introduce you to another equation, okay, um, and I'm going to actually write it on the side so we have room to talk about it, okay. We have a financial equation. When we talk about applications, we're going to talk about this financial equation. It is A equals P times 1 plus R raised to the T. This P stands for principal but that's the amount at time zero. 
which also means it's your initial amount. What are we starting with? Okay, what are we starting with? This R stands for rate, and it should be in a percentage. And remember, when we have a percent, we're going to move our decimal two places left. Okay, we need a number. The T stands for time. And that's time passed. Okay, how much time is going on? How much time passes? And then your A is just the money in your account. After so much time, how much money am I going to have? So with this equation, we're going to apply it up here at the top of our notes. All right, we have um, A equals P times 1 plus R raised to the T. Okay. We're going to break it down into steps before we do some word problems here at the bottom. So, do I have a growth or a decay? We should see growth because of my parent function here. 1.75 is bigger than 1. We just talked about the rate. How much is being pushed over 1? It's 0.75. Your initial amount is in the spot that P is in. Okay, your principal which is going to be 15. And they want you to evaluate if x equals 4. Anytime you see x, you can think of it as t equals 4 as well. They're going to be interchangeable for this problem. So let's substitute. I have 15 times 1.75 raised to the 4. So just like we see it, 15 times 1.75 raised to the fourth, and I get this number, so I'm going to write 140.68. We'll go to two decimal places. We're technically talking about dollars with these problems. Number two, another example, we still have a growth because our base is bigger than one. My rate is that percentage, that number that pushes me over one. My initial value is in that P spot. So that's going to be 25. And when I go to evaluate, I'm just substituting in for time. So I'm going to say 25 times 1.23 raised to the second power. So again, that's how I typed it into my calculator. And I get 37.82. I encourage you to do number three on your own. You need to practice it as an example. Let's move down to number four. The tuition of a private college was $15,000. That is going to be your initial amount. Okay. The tuition was about 7.2%. Okay. This is your rate. And it says increase. That's how we know we have a growth function. That's how we know we're going to be using the equation we just wrote at the top of our page. So write an exponential equation that describes this. We're going to say, all right, we're going to start with 15,000. Then I'm going to have 1 plus, I'm going to raise that to the T. This is my rate. But please remember that we cannot put in a percentage in our problem. We need to move this two decimal places to the left. And we're going to put in 0 0.072.
So now how much will tuition be in five years? We're going to substitute in a five where we see T. So we're going to say 15,000, one, two, three, times one plus 0 0.072. And we'll raise it to the fifth because it's five years. Enter. So tuition is going to be two, one, two, three, it's going to jump to $21,235.63 in five years. Okay. Let's look at number five. A vintage radio was purchased by Grandma Schmidt in 1945 for $16. So here's my initial amount. You know the radio... You know the radio knows it's worth what it's worth, okay? So each year the radio's value increased. There's my growth function. And I have a rate of 1.4% increase. So let's write this equation. We started off at a $16 radio. We'll have one plus and then time. Okay. And we need to change 1.4% to a decimal. So we'll get 0 0.014. And now we need to discuss time. Time is something that is past. So we have 2020 and we have 1945. So you need to do a little bit of math in your calculator and decide, all right, from 2020 to 1945, that is 75 years that has passed. So we'll use that in for our time. So we're going to have 16 times 1 plus 0 0.014. And we'll raise that to the 75. So this radio is going to be worth a whopping $45.39 in 75 years. Okay? That rate of increase is very small. So my number at the end of 75 years is still kind of small. Go ahead and try that last one on your own. So we have something to talk about at the start of class tomorrow. This is the end of video one. We still need to talk about decay.